promise begins when Lyra Belclaw decides to check out the retiring room when she saves her uncle, Lord Azrael, from being poisoned. Lyra is an 11-year-old orphan who lives in Jordan College along with Pantalaim and her demon. Lyra leaves Jordan College after she meets the fabulous Miss Coulter. When Master gives her permission to go with Miss Coulter for schooling and a trip to the North, Lyra jumps on what she thinks is a great opportunity. But when she gets a rare alethiometer from her master and he tells her to keep it away from Miss Coulter, she begins to get uneasy. Later at Miss Coulter's home, she sees Miss Coulter's demon coming out of her room, and she decides to take the alethiometer and run. She hears rumors about evil things called gobblers that experiment on kids and sometimes eat them. During her travels, she begins to see the truth. She meets and makes friends with the Egyptians, water gypsies, and Iorc, now cast Pansir Bjorn, or Armored Bear, and embarks on a quest to rescue missing children that were stolen by the gobblers. She also looks to rescue her uncle, who is being held prisoner by Iorc's kind, and she discovers he is actually her father. During a battle with witches, she is captured by the gobblers. She is caught eavesdropping on gobbler scientists, and she finds out the horrible truth of what the gobblers are doing, separating children from their demons. Demons and people have a connection so that demons can't move far away from them or it hurts extremely badly because it's like there's an invisible chain holding them together and they're pulling them. If a demon is cut away from a person, they become very lethargic or even die. Lyra is thrown into a separating contraption by the scientist that caught her, but she is saved by Miss Coulter, who not only wants the alethiometer, but is also her mother. Lyra is able to escape with all the other children captured by the gobblers. She, her friend Roger, and Iorc are taken in a balloon by Lee Scoresby, a human friend of Iorc's, the Svalbard, where Iorc was banished from. Iorc wins a duel by killing King Ayufer and becomes king himself. Lyra visits her formerly jailed father, and as soon as he, as she see, he sees her, she, he panics, yelling, Get out! Turn around! Get out! Go! I did not send for you. Once he calms down, he tells her to keep the oath, the honor, and go to bed. Lord Azrael's butler wakes her up in the morning and tells her, her Lord Azrael's taken Roger. I don't know what to do. He's left no orders. I think he's madness. And if you don't want to know how it ends, read the book itself. Philip Pullman was born in Norwich, England in October 1946. When Philip was a young boy, he lived in England, Zimbabwe, and Australia because his dad and his stepdad were both in the Air Force. When he was 11, he moved to Britain and lived in North Wales. Once he completed secondary school, he went to Exeter College, Oxford, to study English. After he finished college, he taught at various middle schools for, school for more than a decade, and then taught at Westminster College, Oxford. He eventually left teaching in order to write full-time. Pullman is a gifted writer who creates complex worlds full of conflict. His topics are often controversial and complicated. Pullman has said he is an agnostic, which is a person who is neutral about whether God exists. But because his books imply that God isn't real, he is often accused of being atheist. He has written almost 20 books, which have won many important awards, including the Carnegie Medal, the Guardian's Children Book Award, the Whitbread Book of the Year Award. One of his best-selling books, The Golden Compass, was first published in 1995 in Northern Ireland, but in 1996, when it came to the United States, it was changed to The Golden Compass. Go get her. When the book was made into a movie in 2007, it caught people's attention. The book was challenged because people thought Pullman was saying that God is evil. In the Golden Compass, the demons are the person's soul, the magical dust is sand, and the church is the bad guy. It upset many churches and religious groups. In 2008 and 2009, the Golden Compass received a lot of negative media attention, and places began to ban or challenge it. Several school districts warned against the book or pulled it off their shelves. Um, I do not believe the Golden Compass should be banned, because you'd be taking a great book away, and no one even has to read the book. So if they don't like it, and they don't want their kids to read it, they can just tell their kids, don't read the book. If I catch you with it, you're in big trouble. Very good.